Hello and welcome to another How to Paint Cars tutorial. I'm really excited about today's um, video because we're going to do our first American car. So far we've done French, Italian, German, British, Swedish, but today we're going to do the mighty Ford Mustang. Now as we're going through this, um, can I point out that if you'd like uh, a line drawing, an outline drawing of the car, there's um, a link for you to click on the description with this video and it'll take you to a downloadable printable copy. That's just the line drawing though. So now you can probably see that there are pencil marks there. It just makes the whole thing easy. I haven't cheated um, in as much as I drew the pencil marks, but uh, it just makes it makes the video work a little bit better I find so start off with the headlight as you can see more or less in the center of your page if you put it in the center of the page it won't matter if you want to be totally accurate go slightly to the right okay and two semicircles to the right now you've got that bit I really don't know what it's called to the left of the headlight between the headlight and where the radiator starts and if you sketch that in, as I say, when you're doing it, feel free, pause the film till you've got it how you want it. And now I did the first half of the radiator grill because it's just kind of, um, it kind of goes slightly downwards to the left and then it comes up from the halfway. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like a U with very, very long arms on its side. Okay. And there you go if you do it the other side. Also don't forget to make that area for the famous badge in the middle of the Mustang of course with the uh, with the horse the Mustang uh, where you'd normally on a Ford get the Ford logo. Um, the Mustang um, was maybe was fortunate within the first couple of years that it was produced that uh, it featured in Steve McQueen's film Bullet with one of the finest car chases I think has ever been put on cinema. We do at this stage you're doing the left hand headlight okay because of the angle of the car very very little appreciable difference in size between left hand and right hand headlights and then that curve to the left which is the edge of the the front of the car there. Also, I think there was um, a brief cameo of a uh, Mustang in the James Bond film OHMSS on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, don't quote me on that, but I've, I've got a feeling there was. OK, now you can see the front end of the car is coming on quite nicely. We've done the radiator. We've done two headlights. So I think the next thing might well be the bumper. Oh, but can you notice I've also started to put the curve of the um, top of the bonnet or the hood uh, there. So there you go. I promised you the bumper and uh, there you have it. It's a pretty straight line. It's quite an easy bumper to do this one because if you between the space directly underneath the two headlights, it's more or less one straight long line, just curving like a capital C at the left hand edge and then just looking like it's coming down um, in like a curve at the right hand edge. It's not actually coming down. That's the, the angle of the car we're looking for. OK. And also, can you see I put in that line from to the right hand edge of the top of the headlight, just curving up slightly, which makes um, it's not exactly a wing, but makes that right hand part of the uh, of the top of the car. So we drew in the top and the sides of the bumper last time. Now we're going to draw in the bottom and just those little, I don't know what the correct name for them is, but bumper posts. One which is almost directly underneath the left hand edge of the radiator grill and one which is just a tiny bit in from the right hand edge of the radiator grill. Okay. And now we draw in the bottom of the front of the car. Can you see you've got two side lights there? One which is um, towards the left un underneath and towards the left of the um, left hand headlight. 
and underneath and also towards the left of the right hand headlight there. And then that curving line curving downwards towards the middle underneath the radiator and then back upwards to make the shape of the front of the car. Cracking on, we've only been five minutes now. Look how much you've got done. So now the edge, the edges of the windscreen or windshield, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are, I suppose. Now, if you do the left hand side first, this might be slightly easier because you've got a more exaggerated slant on that side to give us a perspective of the angle we're looking at the car from. Try and match it up to the kind of curve I've got, uh, sorry, the kind of slant I've got going on there, just curving at the top. Now, from the top edge of the bonnet, you want to start this line of the right hand edge of the windscreen or windshield from a space on the bonnet line directly above the right hand edge of the Mustang badge. OK. Now, go to above the right hand headlight where you made that little bit of wing last time. Now we're going to take a line which slants downwards to the right, very gently slanting, slightly less than the angle that the um, top of the bonnet or the hood slides down. Can you see it's almost the same line repeated? Now the distance you want to go is a bit more than the distance between the right hand edge of the headlight and the right hand edge of the radiator, maybe even as much as twice that. And then you can make the uh, right hand edge of the windscreen. That doesn't slant as much as the left hand edge, obviously. I mean, you can see they're discernibly different there. Because you're working in pencil, you can play around with this a bit until you get it absolutely right. Try and judge the distance as well from the um, side of the car up to the top where the top of the windscreen is going to be play around with it a bit and when you're happy with it then i'd move on to the next which in this case is the top edge of the bonnet can you see that's a curve round okay the curve is more pronounced towards the right hand edge there and then gently down to meet the left hand edge of the windscreen and we're starting to get something which is just going to be recognisable as a Ford Mustang. See, I thought I'd got away without any of the uh, the scans which make up this uh, film jumping, but just this particular one, all the rest are pretty much well aligned. So we make the wheel arch now, the front wheel arch. Now look on the uh, underneath underside of the car beneath, beneath the front bumper. Look at the side light on the right. Now, can you see where the line which becomes the curve of the wheel arch starts? Because that's what I want you to do next. Curve that gently round and then up until it almost, but not quite, touches the edge of the bumper there. And then keep the curve coming up and round with the apex of the curve on a level which is just below the level of the centre of the uh, headlights and then back round in a back to front C ending just below the other side of the wheel arch you can see there. You might also see that um, I've extended that wing just a little bit further so it's noticeably past the right hand edge of the wheel arch because that's where the door is going to start coming down. I've also put in the aerial as well. If you look above the Mustang badge slightly to um, le slightly left of centre from the bonnet line I've just, just stretched the aerial up there because the Ford Mustang is a kind of car which has to have an aerial. Okay. So chrome trimming now, now you can see it tapers from the right to the left, ending in a point just to the right of the right hand um, headlight and, and just above centre, I've got it. Again, take your time to get that right. Then from the edge of the, uh, the parallel line, which is above the chrome trim, from the right hand end of that, just curve it gently down. 
because that's going to be the leading edge of the door. Bypass the chrome trim. If it helps, draw the line right through the chrome trim because you can rub it out after if you're working in pencil. And then this should continue slanting slightly downwards towards the left, eventually curving round and slightly up to join the left, the right hand side of the wheel arch. OK, going well. <laughs> Now, parallel to the right hand edge of the windscreen or windshield, I want you to draw another line slightly to the right. But when you're just about reaching the top of the windscreen or windshield, that you should curve away upwards to the right, because that's going to be um, where we're going to start the, wind, the side windows. Also, if you take the line at the bottom of the side windows which goes all the way up to the headlight I want you to carry that on but increase the slant slightly more now and don't carry it on a, as far you want it just slightly more than half as much again half the length again okay and then from there can you see by the edge of the chrome trim we can make, I don't know if it's an air duct, it always looks to me like an air duct, but we can make that shape there with a line coming, coming to the left from it, parallel to the bottom of the chrome trim. OK, you can also just draw in the little shape for the uh, door handle if you can. So now we complete the windows there, OK? Only the one big side window, which is divided in two. So you've got the little triangular bit at the front and then a wider bit there. Now, can you see that where the inside edge of the window is on the um, on the right at the back, the back of the car now curves up. OK, so you can do all those lines with the window and the line of the rear line of the post at the back of the cab of the car because then we're going to curve down to the back of the car there. If you look on the bottom of the car, I've extended that line at the bottom round and then underneath where the window, the right hand edge of the window, quite a bit underneath it, I've curved it up and round into the rear wheel arch. The apex of the wheel arch is some way below the apex of the front wheel arch but think in terms of use the chrome trim to guide you because it should be just about reaching um, parallel to where the chrome trim ends if you have a look on the picture you'll see it more clearly roof of the car now really simple apex of the curve just before the top right hand corner of the windscreen or windshield um, pretty much parallel to the top of the side window and join it up with the rear post going down to the back of the car. Can you see I've also put another line uh, where the bottom of the door is, which is parallel to the actual bottom of the car. Now join the rear of the car, OK? So the line from the bottom of the rear window post to the back of the car, now that should be slanting more than the bottom edge of the side window. Not a lot, but just a tiny bit. Can you see now we come slanting downwards, very, very um, gentle slant to the right. And then we curve round, eventually meeting the bottom of the wheel arch there. And that's the body of the car is now done. So we put the wheels in. If you've done any of my tutorials before, um, you'll know that this is just a matter of trial and error. I wasn't too unhappy first time with uh, these wheels. Uh, if you notice, you draw them as oval, always as an oval, um, unless you're doing a straight side on view, um, which I don't like to do. Uh, the ovals which make the wheels are always much taller than they are wide. In this case, they're about twice as tall as they are wide in the front. And even more than that in the back, the back um, wheel should be an even thinner, taller oval. And the lines to show the edge of the tyres, they look a bit thin here, but work with me on this because we've got more to do on the underside of the car yet before we finished.
Speaking of which, there it is. Now I've just done that all as an outline with um, working from the left between the um, left side light and the um, bumper post, curving very gently down in a semicircle, and then making the shape of the flattened wheel coming back up. Then you've got all this gubbins underneath. Uh, the only thing I was really worried about was doing the pipe work by the um, right hand wheel because that does show a little bit um, but that's pretty much it so I did put the details in because that badge is so important and so iconic I did actually sketch in the Mustang and also just outlined some of the windows in the interior so have you got your paints ready because it's painting stage next watercolor stage we start with do you know what I really really like this I wasn't going to keep it like that this was only the start but I love the um, the crimson melting into the blue into the uh, green with the blue on the top of the tire the green of the wheel arch and then that bluey purple for the um, left hand wheel it was never going to stay this way but uh, I liked it gave me something to work with so uh, a fairly light blue for the bodywork. Okay, I try to. You, it doesn't come out very well on this uh, scan. It doesn't pick up blue brilliantly. But those doors, they that blue on the side door is actually melting into a very much lighter blue underneath it. It just looks white. You're going to have to take my word on that. Okay, um, blotchy as hell. But it really doesn't matter because of there's things going to go on top of that. So if you look by where it says Ford on the hood or on the bonnet, um, that's kind of like, you know, there's a watery spread gone on there and you can see the edge. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. So a little bit more work with blue, a darker, a slightly darker blue applied at the front and I've just tried to start to give an idea of the shadows on the the side the bits where the blue is darker um, also applied grey now to the underside of the front of the car a very light grey on the uh, radiator grill um, the interior I actually started with um, a very very light um, yellow mixed with just a touch of sienna and one that was still very wet applied a little bit of grey to mingle with it on top if you look at the tires as well you can see that on the closest tire i've applied grey to the top right hand um, part of the tire but also on the hubcaps i've started putting in just a little bit of detail of that with grey on the underside of the car as well i used a darker grey to start just picking out the shadow of there and the wheel arches I've already darkened. Oh, if you look at the headlights as well, there was just a little bit of grey paint applied in there before I start putting the details in. So out with the brushes now. Now on my reference photos, the one I colour scheme I really, really liked was well it's it, difficult to tell. The highlights, the edges were definitely light blue. But I, it's difficult to tell whether the uh, main colour is black or just a very, very dark blue. So I thought I'd apply this dark blue first to the darker areas and then decide whether I was going to take it even darker and, and maybe even to black. Um, and I quite like the look of the blue on blue here. So I decided I was going to persevere with that. Now. You can see on the front of the car the details where I've added the shadows in black, which, to be honest, I thought was necessary to give the, the kind of contrast that you want between areas of light and dark. You might also notice in the interior that I've, I've done the trick of taking the black brush pen, brushing the water brush uh, over it to pick up grey and then just going over some of the uh, areas of the interior darken it with the grey 
picked up the fine liner now so you can see details have been added to the right of the headlight dark dark shadow on the left hand edge of the radiator um, shadows just above the bumper I've also added to the bumper two layers of blue a very light blue and the darker blue on top to create some of the reflections there I darkened the um, like I say so that um, thing I think which looks like an air duct on these uh, just to the left of the rear wheel, wheel arch. Darken both wheel arches as well with black and more work on the underside. Uh, fine liner, I picked out the uh, seals of the uh, windows through the interior and also started working on the rubber seal around the windscreen or windshield. Doesn't look right yet. It looks better because I put some colour into the interior. Decided we've had the Mustang going out for a burn up in the country and that's why it's got that kind of green. Underneath the car just added a hint of brown, just picked up the, um, just laid a tiny little bit of the, the, the brown colour in there with the brush pen and then spread it with the um, water brush. You can see it on the two wheels on the right I've added more detailing um, just a tiny bit of blue in the center of the two headlights I don't know if you can notice that either and it's it's starting to look more and more like a finished article even more shadows now can you see I've picked out the um, I used the fine liner to pick out the Mustang on the badge a um, little bit more detailing work with the dark blue pen. I've also darkened the interior again, picking up the grey from the edge of the black brush pen. Um, and not a lot, not a great deal of detail left to apply now. And there it is. I traditionally, I tend to leave the radiator till last because it normally does make a, quite a big difference. Uh, I also darkened the um, top edge of the windscreen just a little bit. And there you go. It's a little bit rough around the edges, this, but kind of that that's a Mustang. You know, it's it's a power car. It's a muscle car. So that's what I was thinking. Now, um, if you're not going to have a if you do have a go at this yourself, uh, I love it if you at least let me know in the comments and if you're brave enough to post a photograph of it on my blog artdaveclark at blogspot.com I'd really love to see it but if you don't fancy going to all the um, stages on the description of this video there is a clickable link and that will take you to um, an downloadable A4 outline drawing of this very Mustang, which is just ready for you or for the kids in your life or, or whoever to colour in. So not a lot remains. I'm going to very quickly take you through all the stages now in the space of about 15 or 20 seconds, and then we'll say goodbye. But in case I forget to say it again, if you like it, please 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 subscribe to my channel and i'll keep on doing these as much as possible oh and if there's a car i haven't done yet which you'd really love to see done leave me a comment in uh, in the comments box below and I'll, I'll do my best to do it in a f future video so are you ready three two one go So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you very soon for another tutorial. All the best now.